Let's talk about section 2.1, which covers logical form and logical equivalence. To begin with, we need to talk about what a statement is. And a statement, in the context of this course, is going to be a sentence that's either true or false. A couple of examples here. First example, the square of 2 is equal to 4. That's a statement. It happens to be a true statement. But this next example is also a statement, which happens to be false. All prime numbers are odd. Now, logical connectives are some are symbols that we can use to build compound statements. And there are three logical connectives covered in this section. This first one, this tilde, is the symbol for not. Then we've got a symbol for and, as well as a symbol for or. And we're going to talk about how those work as far as truth values go when you're talking about compound statements. There are other logical connectives that we'll see in the, the next section. Um, one other thing to be aware of is that not all sources show these exactly the same way. And and or are pretty consistent. Not has a uh, sometimes a different symbol is used for not. Just something to be aware of. Um, statement variables are variables used to replace statements. Um, often we use the variables P and Q um, or P, Q, and R depending on how many variables we are working with. So if we take the statement X is positive, so let's say X is some real number. We take uh, the statement x is positive and call that p. We take the statement x is equal to zero and call that q. Then we can build a compound statement with that connective or and say p or q. And what that would mean is that x is positive or x is equal to zero. So we just take those two statements and link them together. Uh, more concisely, uh, the, the more common way we would see that expressed is to say x is greater than or equal to zero. So here are truth tables associated with those three connectives. Okay, so let's talk a, a little bit about each of these. So I said the first symbol represents not. And how that works as far as the truth values go is if you take a statement P and you take not P, well, the, the symbol not or that connective not reverses the truth values. So if P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. Okay, pretty simple. It just reverses those. P and Q is something that's going to only be true if both P and Q are true. So we've got, if we look at the rows of that table, the only time when P and Q is true is if both variables P and Q um, are associated with true statements. Okay, and all the other three rows, it's false. Uh, or is going to be something that's true if either P or Q are true. And that includes when, when they're both true. Okay. So this is an inclusive or. Um, another way to say that is the only case where P or Q is false is if both P is false and Q is false. Um, in this course, by the way, we don't have a symbol that we use um, for an exclusive or. Okay, there are ways uh, that we can construct an exclusive or with the other symbols, but we don't have a, a symbol set aside for that uh, in this class.
So what I want to do here is look at a truth table for a compound statement that uses more than one of these symbols. So we've got not P and Q. Uh, let me say a couple things before we examine the truth table. Notice the parentheses around the P and Q. Uh, there's a reason for that, which is there's an order of operations that go with these connectives. And for the connectives we've talked about so far, the order of operations is simply that the not symbol uh, gets first priority, and an or are considered equal priority. Okay, so that's, that's what we have so far. And so the, um, the parentheses are necessary here to, to show that the and is going to um, come first, and then we negate that whole thing. Um, so this truth table, we've got a column for P and Q. And every time I work with two variables, I'm going to set up these truth tables exactly the same way. So notice the Q alternates true, false, true, false. The P alternates true, true, false, false. Uh, one very common mistake that I see when students are just learning truth tables is they just kind of set up the, the rows however comes to mind on any particular example. So they're looking for combinations of true and false. And the problem with that is, especially when we get to three variables, is that you, if you're, if you're just sort of uh, brainstorming and, and listing them in whatever order comes to mind, you're going to forget some, perhaps. You might use the same combination more than once. And so potentially you're gonna leave out rows or you're gonna duplicate rows. And we really wanna be careful not to do that. Um, another thing, another reason to do this in a very systematic way is because you wanna be able to compare one truth table to another one, um, both in cases where you are making both truth tables and you want to compare them, or sometimes if you want to compare to something in the textbook or some example that I've given or something that a classmate has, and it's going to help to compare if you have the rows set up in a consistent way. Um, because if I have to compare to someone that has the, tr the rows in a different order, you know, then it takes an extra step of saying, oh, this is my first row, but it's your fourth row. Um, and we, so we want to try to avoid that. Okay. Uh, one other thing I want to point out about this truth table is I've got a column for P and a column for Q, and you're always going to have a column for each variable. The last column is the column that goes with the given statement. But there's another column. There's a column that just says P and Q. And this is what I want to recommend to you. Um, and maybe some of you might prefer not to do this, but I would strongly advise that you do. Um, I think it's a good habit to get into, which is that you want to have some intermediate columns as you build toward the final statement that you're working toward. Um, otherwise, you're leaving it to, to do these things in your head, do all, you know, multiple um, connectives at the same time. And that's uh, a good way to make mistakes. <laughs> so, um, so try to avoid that. Uh, so that's why I have the PNQ column is to do this step by step. So we talked about P and Q. That's going to be true only when P and Q are both true. So that third column says true, false, false, false. 
Remember the not connective takes all the truth values and reverses them. So that's why the final column there is false, true, true, true. Okay, it, the reverse of the third column. Okay, so I'm gonna compare this in the next slide here to another compound statement. And what I'm going to point out when we get to that next example is that the last column of that example looks the same as this last column. So let's remember again, this last column says false, true, true, true. Okay. So here's a different example. This truth table is for not P or not Q. And I don't have any parentheses in that compound statement. Uh, remember the not comes before and an or. So we don't need parentheses there if, um, you know, if we want to follow that order of operations. We only need parentheses if we want to kind of override the order of operations and do things um, in a different order. Um, Okay, so we've got column for P, column for Q. The rows are laid out exactly the same way as the previous. So I've got Q alternating true, false, true, false. So I've got P alternating true, true, false, false. And that way I get all four combinations of the true and false for P and Q. I've got a couple of intermediate columns here, one for not P one for not Q. So not P would just reverse all the values for P. So false, false, true, true. Not Q would reverse all the values for Q. We've got false, true, false, true. And then the last column is not P or not Q. So we take the not P column, we take the not Q column, combine them using or. So that means it's true as long as either not P or not Q is true, okay, or both. So that's why the last column is false, true, 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 which is the same as the last column on the previous example. Because those matched, we call those statement forms logically equivalent. Okay, so if the truth values line up exactly the same way, and that's, again, that's why it's important to have the, col the, uh, sorry, the rows consistent so we can compare. So if they work out exactly the same way, we call them logically equivalent statement forms. And what we write is this. So the way I would read that is, not P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. So this logical equivalence is an example of one of De Morgan's laws. Um, and there's another one that looks like this, not P or Q is logically equivalent to not P and not Q. And you can check for yourself, it might be a useful exercise to, to verify that second one using a truth table for the statement form on the left and a truth table for the statement form on the right and verifying that yes, they give you the same truth values uh, as each other. Um, one thing I'll point out about these two laws, I mean, we can just look at those and see the similarities, but it looks almost like we're, in a sense, distributing the not, and when we do, it reverses the, the and to an or, or the or to an and, so that's, um, that may help you remember how those work. That's it for this particular video. Um, the next section of the book gets into a couple other types of um, logical connectives.
and the, the section in general is about conditional statements. Hope you found that helpful. See you in the next video.